Way, way, way. I do this for the family, it's serious to me. My main goal is for everyone to eat. It ain't about emotion, the love is all we need. We build an empire and let them niggas be. But still keep the peace, cause we gotta keep the peace. It's kids involved now, so shit can go down. Welcome to another edition of the Dugar Podcast. I'm here with my boy D. Welch of Top 5 Dead or Alive. Uh, man, tell us a little bit about your, uh, about your your business, man, about yourself. What you got going on, sir? Uh, this 2020 been crazy, man. Last, man, been quarantined like everybody else. Yeah. Um, man, just working. Um, yeah. <laughs> so Top five get- dead or alive. That's my, that's my brand. That's what I stand by. Um, we do cyphers. We do it all. Oh uh, yeah, so like <clears throat> I I've known that you did like your last three events, uh, and then you had a fourth plan this year. Um, so what's like the update on that? What you what you got going for that? Well, I definitely was gonna have volume four this year, but man, I feel like this not the it's not the year to do it because it's so much other things that's important. I feel you. You on got that. Corona. You got we got the Black Lives Matter. Um. Got a lot of stuff that just is really a cipher really not important this year, to be honest. We got a lot of other stuff we need to address and take care of before a cipher. So as, as far as like you mentioned the Black Lives Matter uh movement, you know, and uh rest in peace, uh Breonna Taylor, Ahmad, and um George Floyd. What is your thoughts on the uh lengthy protests that have been going on? Because it's We've been going at it for like I think this is like eleven or twelve days right now. I love it, man. I feel like we shouldn't let up off their necks until we get changed. Until we start, man, it's a lot of stuff that needs to be addressed. And as long as we keep free, peaceful protesting, that's the way to go. So when it came to the riots, like what was your thoughts on that? Because a lot of people believe that and I was I, I I'm not gonna say I'm not one that didn't believe, because I kind of believe this too, that most of those riots were, wasn't incited by us Blacks. It was more incited by others. What do, what do you think about that? Um, I think it was a healthy balance of both. <laughs> I think you go, you always going to have that. When you, when you stand for something, you always going to have your people that's just on bullshit. And that was just an example of that. But even though the bullshit that a lot of people was on with the rioting, it didn't deter from the basic focal point of people peaceful protesting, protesting and getting their point across. I feel you on that, man. I um, like I said, I I kind of believe that you know some of like we come together to peacefully protest as as we always do, and it, it's always like gonna be some bad seeds in the crowd, but for the most part. We try to show our respect uh, and do what and, and get what we need done across to those that we feel are oppressing us. And then you know you get like these burnt buildings, billion-dollar corporations get to burn it down and stuff. And then you know some of that stuff don't be us. You know it'd be like uh, anti-capitalism. We, just, we, just get the, we get the black guy of it because the bulk of black. It's a lot of black people out there protesting, so anything that go left, they they quick to blame us for it. Yeah, man, and that's I don't like that, man. But you know, like you said though, I mean, whatever it takes though. You know, I'm not against the rioting and burning. I don't give a fuck if they burn that stuff down. We built it. You know what I'm saying? But um, when it comes to like the outside influences and stuff, they wouldn't want us to come to their part of the city and burn their part of the city down. So it'd be like, you know, you're going to come to ours and you're going to do the same thing to ours or whatever, you know, like that's, that's the only thing I had in my mind when it came to like the outside influence. Okay. How do you, um, man, I'm so used to interviewing people. I'm asking you questions. Um, <laughs> hey, it's okay, man. Shit. How, how do you think, um, Okay, this is step one. I feel like we protest, and what should be phase two? Because we can't protest forever. What's the next step? Well, depend. it depends on when they feel. 
like once we figure out like the con conclusion of the George Floyd and Breonna Taylor cases uh, uh, in the Ahmad um, case, then I believe the next stage, it might take us into the voting um, stage or whatever, where we got to just vote the president out. And from there, dude, it's just working on them, working on finding the laws and amendments that hold us down, bro. Because some of those laws and amendments, bro, it support all people, but it's not really in support of all people, if you get what I'm saying. Like, bearing arms, bro, like, People like a, a lot of white supremacists can walk up or whatever the wherever they call it, whatever group they call themselves, they can march in front of the um Capitol buildings or whatever with rifles, ARs and everything. But then you get a guy with a pistol, a black guy with a pistol in the inner city protest protecting his store or whatever, like Gino or you or or a minority, I should say, protecting his store and he get arrested. You get what I'm saying? So like we gotta find out which laws are really like holding us down, man. And then See, a lot of these votes, like primary, like you, it's the little votes that matter. Cause them, it ain't your president fault that your neighborhood messed up. It, it's the mayor, the con. You know what I'm saying? It's it, it's those little votes that matter. So a lot of people be saying, "Oh, voting don't matter," but it do. So when when people get buzzed down and get all these years, that's from not voting. A lot of stuff that's messed up in the neighborhood comes from people not voting. Yeah, I agree with that, bro. Like we don't know who in office, but so we. That's why you, got, you really got to do your homework. You really got to do your homework on who you vote for, because I I hear a lot of people saying, "Oh, y'all need to get out and vote." But then the next question being posed is, "Who do I vote for?" So really, really take your time and before you give your vote, do your homework. Man, most definitely, man, because, you know, um, for the most part, people, like, when it came to our presidential candidates, it's been, like, picking from the lesser of two evils, you know? And um, so, like, if you don't do your research, like, ba ba Bernie Sanders uh, missed out on being a, a primary uh, candidate for the Democratic Party two terms in a row, you know, but... Ain't no telling, like, if he would have made a difference, you know? But, like, it would have been good to see, you know, other than finding out this way with this guy that we got right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think anybody can do better than what we have now. <laughs> <laughs> Man, so, like, so so what do you feel like? Um, okay, I, I'll take it. I, I'll answer your question with another um Proposal to police reform, bro. What do you feel about that? Um, police reform. I think you got it. It's so many crooked cops in the system. You got to really start from the bottom and work your way to the top. I think. I think the public should have a saying. I I feel like the public should have a helping hand and decide who police their neighborhood. Cause it's a public service anyway, so why not? I agree. I agree with that, man. Um, we because be a lot of a, go ahead, go ahead. A lot of people be getting harassed in the hood. The cops don't don't have no rapport. You said a lot of cops don't have a rapport. Yeah, a lot of police don't. They don't have rapports with the neighborhood. They just try to come and police it without building a rapport. Yeah, I mean back like. Even even though it was still crooked back then, but you kind of knew the police that rode through your neighborhood back then, bro. Yeah. Nowadays, it's like, and like you said, anybody can just get a badge and come pull. Like, man, if you live on the border of counties, like that county border or whatever, like between Franklin and Milwaukee or South Milwaukee and whatever, like West Bend and South Milwaukee, whatever, bro. Um. The, and I, them police officers, they like brown deer in Milwaukee. They they be swapping, bro. They be in and out of the neighborhoods, bro. It be brown deer supposed to be on the north side or whatever. They will come to the south side or whatever and come check some stuff out. And they be like, man, like <laughs> that jurisdiction don't really matter no more, bro. It, it don't. It don't. And that's like that's that's the crazy thing, bro. So like, um. 
have you ever experienced any kind of injustice like uh, when it comes it's, to it's like, hard to say. I think all black people then experience injustice. It, it just gets to the point we numb to it. I can't even yeah. tell you a breakdown of how. It's just numb. It feels natural. Yeah. It, it, it don't even it feel like a typical day at work. Like we so numb to it. Yeah, bro. We we tired, bro. That's a fact, man. That's a fact, bro. But um, so. While we still on this uh, point, how do you feel about the charges that have been placed on the officers that was a part of uh, killing George Floyd? Like, I mean, I, I know. Def- I, go ahead. I definitely think it took too long. Yeah. Like they got it. They they had it on tape. So what more? <laughs> that's the best coping that you can have. The tape don't lie. Yeah. Um. So what took so long? And I feel like them delaying the process, they caused the riots. That made people act in a certain manner. Dude, so like what what is what is your thoughts on excessive force when people are protesting protesting excessive force? Like how how does that equate with each other, bro? How do you use excessive force on a protest? Against that's a force, bro. You know, um, it was. I just know the rest of the recipe ain't gonna be good because two <laughs> two people with the same energy, you know, it's only gonna end bad for somebody. Yeah, facts, man. Yeah. I know. Um, that's why you, it's like you gotta you gotta go to certain situations with a game plan, and yeah. don't disappear from that game plan. Don't disappear from that game plan. Yeah. You can't, do both. You, can, you can't do both. You can't peaceful riot. So it's a B in this car. I ain't to hold on one. <laughs> Boy, yeah, we good now, though. <laughs> I, I definitely don't think you can do both. You can't peaceful protest and riot. You got to pick one. So which one we going to do? And I think a lot of people was at the same place at the same time, but a lot of people had different agendas. Yeah. <laughs> So um, here's a, here's one here's another question, and we can move on from this. What about the police destroying water bottles? Uh, so like it was a story that I think it was it was Asheville, North Carolina, where the police uh, went to one of the uh, stations that was set up for the protesters and everything, and they stabbed the cases of water, multiple cases of water, emptied them out and destroyed the food or whatever. And the reason why they said they did it was because for the past few days, people were throwing water bottles at them. That was, that was their reason. Like. <laughs> That's the most asinine, like, <laughs> that just sound crazy, like. A person that got riot gear on worried about water. Yeah, bro. I was, <laughs> I was thinking the sound like, bro. Like y'all got all y'all got a helmet, a shield, multiple like a, a vest, multiple um layers. And you worry about the water, bro. And you shooting back rubber bullets. Yeah, you get what like, I'm saying? You shooting back rubber bullets. You're using mace. And other excessive forces, bro, for water, dog. I, I definitely think black people, though, as a whole, we on the right track to getting what we want. Like, and the next step is to take back our communities. Yeah. Stop shopping with these Arabs that's not treating you with respect. True. Let's start getting our hair products from people that look like us. Ain't no way we should be going to lingling them to get hair products. Dude. I totally agree because I, I, I've been for like the last year, I kind of been like, man, first of all, we need to support our people when they do come up with these business ideas. Like if your guy going to start a chicken spot, I don't like, I don't care if it need some work. You know what I mean? A recipe might need some work. We still got to, you know, support bro, because like at the end of the day, that dollar is going back into the community. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
And you know what? What goes along, like, you're not only paying for a product, though, you, you're paying for customer service. And I think a lot of people fail to realize that, like, you're paying for customer service. Like, and, and stop asking for discounts. Get that man or woman what she asking for. If you're going to support. For real. There's no half. Don't halfway support me. Because you don't go to Maylene. And you don't go to the white man or the Arab asking for discounts. You don't go to the Gucci store or Prada store asking for discounts. You pay you pay the tab. Yeah. I mean, I, I seen that, um, I seen a meme where it was like three different races uh, selling hot dogs or whatever. And the dude, the black guy that was selling hot dogs had like all the excuses like, man, why are your prices so high? But it was the same price as the white guy selling hot dogs. So it was like, we do tend to do that to our people. We feel like we get that can discount. But, like, you know, at the end of the day, bro, like you said, dog, we can't shortchange our community, bro. You know what I'm saying? Look, like, it's it's one thing to have a deal, but it's another thing to shortchange a motherfucker. Like, I mean, like, short shortchange a person. You know, so, like, yeah, I totally agree on that, man. You got to pay that, man. So, like, yeah. Man, if you gonna support black, this is the year to support black businesses. For sure, dude. For sure, man. Um, this hat right here was made by my guy Danny Warbucks, bro. It's, it don't say Lakers, it say Lakers. You know. <laughs> and this shirt was made by my guy Corn. Yeah. Black owned. Black owned, bro. For sure, man. So like, that's the movement right now, man. And I like, I've never been the type to buy high end kind of um clothes. Maybe shoes, you know what I'm saying? Cause you know, yeah, feet gotta be neat. But um, outside of that, man, like, but it wouldn't be like high end designer like Gucci and all that. Because at the end of the day, man, like, shit, Jordan Black, bro. You get what I'm saying? So you know, like, even though he got his faults, <laughs> his history ain't been that good, man. But you know, he just pledged a hundred million, man. So you know, maybe my 250 went towards that, you know? So, like, I, I, I feel good after that now. But, like, you know. I know. <laughs> that nigga been taking for the hood. That nigga been getting billions of dollars. Like, people been buying two and shit to be getting the time. A hundred million dollars. That's a tax write off. You paying taxes. That's all he's doing. You nigga, you paying taxes. <laughs> <laughs> bro said, man, you done gave us your ties and shit, bro. <laughs> right, that's all you did. That was small. That's just, yeah, that ain't. No, funny, man. Hey, I'm not mad at you, though, man. You know, we we can we can agree to disagree on that. I mean, I I don't see. Look, I like the first thing that came to my mind when I did see that, although I was appreciative. I thought, man, somebody's tired of hearing about LeBron. You know, like, because <laughs> he got to school. He be uh, speaking out on social issues. So I was like, man, right. I, like, and people like, oh, man, what LeBron do off the court makes him the GOAT and everything. Like, Michael Jordan, like, man, go ahead, bless yeah. the hood one time. <laughs> yeah, I believe, like, a lot of people be saying they in position of power and you in a position of to be a role model, whether you want that position or not. So I think if you a public figure, it comes with you. You want the public dollar, but then when it comes to stuff like Black Lives Matter and stuff like that, you're silent. Like, yeah, people be quiet when it's time to speak up. But when your album for sale, or your or you want people to tune into your games, then you loud. Like, it gotta be keep that same energy. Yeah, man, I feel you on that, man. So, um, cause hey, yeah, they've been criticizing Oprah, Oprah. You know what I'm Oprah. saying? <laughs> really? they, yeah, man, they've been they've been criticizing her. She now she's about to hold a two night town hall meeting on just uh, social justice and everything. So they don't they don't smoke her out of there, bro. You know what I mean? They don't they don't made her come out. <laughs> I think that we done, we done, we done traded her. <laughs> so we, we, don't, we don't want her no more, man. Give us, um... No, funny, man. Give us Aaron Rodgers. Give Rogers. us Ellen. Give yeah. us Ellen. Man. <laughs> or somebody. Facts, man. <laughs> Do I say, 
No, she on the sideline, bro. She ain't been to a barbecue in years, bro. Roscoe Jenkins thinks she's too good for the family reunion. <laughs> Dude, man. Hey, so look, to pivot to um back to your business, man. Uh top okay. of the live business. So like you hosted three successful ciphers. Um you bought in well the first one was for the local people, but you still had like big names that was local on the in the cipher. The second one yeah. you bring in Bill Collector uh from out of t- from what, Pennsylvania? Uh Philadelphia. Yeah. Yeah, some, yeah, Pennsylvania. Northtown. Northtown PA. Northtown PA. Yeah, man. Shout out to Bill Collector, man. Cool dude, funny guy, man. Big shout out to Bill, man. And then, so, but then your third one, your third cypher was like, I mean, my God, bro. Like, so, like, you have a verb who just came off a battle with Lux, and then you have Goods who just came off a battle with Cassidy. What made you yeah. feel like, man, like, let's get them here? Um, it was really the luck of the draw. To be okay. honest with you, it, it kind of just worked out like that. And it, 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 <laughs> once you cooking in that kitchen, a lot of ingredients just start working with each other. Like, damn, that lemon pepper do good go on that chicken. Like, so, <laughs> so what was your working out like that? What was your favorite moments from like all three of the uh, ciphers? Like, what was your top three, or what was one of your favorite moments from each cipher? I should say. Um, just the fact that they're getting bigger and better. Yeah. And, and just, it's a lot of stuff you could take from it. Like, I was getting a lot of people together, getting the black community together. Every time I threw one, it wasn't no violence. Yeah. I thought that was dope. That was it. That was awesome, bro. Yeah. Um, just getting people together with friendly competition and letting people know this thing is way harder to be on that stage when than what it appears to be. And you know, because you was, you was front and center. Yeah, man. Hey, it's a sweat, bro. It, it is a sweat. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, them lights, them lights turn into heaters, bro. You know? Yeah. And, um, so, um, and I just wanted to, um, I love battle rap. Big, big shout out to um, Black Ice Cartel. So I always wanted to throw something and have my own, but I didn't want it to be a battle rap. So I was like, man, what if you can buy ciphers and battle rap? Um, so, that's, so like yeah, that team versus this team. So that was the recipe for the third one. So that's how yeah, you got to the third one, right? Yeah. Okay. So like the 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 first the first two, like cause the first two was just typically just ciphers. Yeah, okay. The second one had a little star power to it. Okay. Yeah, and then you just like ripped off of that. Yeah. Yeah. I liked it that, bro. On the real. So, you know, who did you think won in the <laughs> in the in the third in the third cipher? We had we had some technical difficulties, bro, you know. Oh. Uh, hey, big shot that, that ain't that ain't taking no knock from the people that won. <laughs> like big, <laughs> big shout out to Hulu Gang, man. They 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 won. But once you rewind the game tape, it looked like Team Top Five Dead or Alive won. Hey man, good. Well, I chalked it up. I mean, we know why. We know why, bro. But it's like it's like we're not gonna take nothing away from Hoodlum Gang, bro. They did do their thing. They did yeah. do their thing or whatever, bro. So then when it came to Verb and uh, Goods teams, who you have? <laughs> I think that was the last line. They won. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, big shout out to Black Sinatra, Jason Johnson, uh, Vixen the Assassin, Calhoun, who else? Um, Sir, Sir uh, Benjamin. Yeah, Sir J. Sir J. Sir J. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. Nice, bro. They, <laughs> they, they watched y'all, bro. Y'all wasn't, y'all wasn't ready. I was ready, bro. You know, but you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a collective. That's what make it hard because it's a yeah. team effort. If your team ain't ready, you ain't ready. 
That's a fact, bro. And I feel like um, they had more chemistry than our team. And I, and, and when, no. I was on the when two of my people was from New York. <laughs> you said how? <laughs> yes. Two because, of my people were no. from New York. But, but still, I still feel like they have more chemistry than our team because, like, they like they even set it up where all of them did one beat and then Goods came in on his own thing. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that was fire. Like, that wasn't that wasn't like you can't. Hey, that, just... that really wasn't that really wasn't planned. To be honest, um, to be honest, Team Goods couldn't agree. They didn't like to beat their Goods pick. Okay. So they was like, we going to rock out to our own beat, and we can mix his beat in. And that's See, how and that's, that why that, and that's why that's chemistry, bro, because they at least came to an agreement, bro. Like, me, our team, bro, I didn't even know how long I should rap. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm like, you know, I'm going to just – I'm going to do a hard two minutes, bro, because I don't want to be up there too long and take too much from woo-woo because it's – and, like, I didn't know what to expect as far as, like, the team chemistry went, bro. And then, like, when we did the Shots Fired uh, series, bro, you know, yeah. I was like, you know, the only shooter, bro. I wasn't the only one. I, I think one more person replied, but, you know, yeah, it was just right like, you. man, they came at my ass on that stage, though, bro. I, like, <laughs> <laughs> I had figures in my face the whole night, bro. Like, hey, I want to do a count. I, I want to do a Shout out how many people directed they shit at you and just was pointing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, dog, I know Calhoun uh, Pac-Man, shout out to dude. Like, he told me after the battle specific, I mean, after the uh, event specifically, like, man, I was going to write something. But you know what? I was like, I'm going to just kill him in this, on stage, bro. And I'm like, that was smart because I would have never known that. You get what I'm saying? Like, if yeah. you would have threw a shot back and I would have, Knew what to expect when you got back on the stage or whatever, but you know, hey, like to be honest, I don't really see nobody taking the belt from um from Team Goods. Like they cold together. I ain't gonna lie. They sometimes chemistry just work in, yeah. in in a manner where you don't really see it coming. Though they got chemistry and they cold, bro. And they got. I feel like they X Factor is Vixen the Assassin, like. Yeah. yeah. In the they fact, hey, they got content, bro. They rap with content, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. they, they all got their own way of delivering it, too, you know? So, like, man, it's it's an amazing thing, bro. You know, I can't wait to the fourth cypher, bro. Because I know, man. I'm going to tell you a little bit about volume four. Like, um, I had a boxing ring. I was going to have it done in a boxing ring. And I was gonna have like Team Tay Rock versus Team Goods, and then oh, I was gonna have Team Bill Collector versus Team Big T. Oh man! So that's still gonna go down, but it's gonna be probably summertime of next year. That'll give me more time to cook and make it be make it better. For sure, man. So like, what are what is your plans for the rest of the summer, man? You got any vacations planned? You gonna try to sneak out the quarantine? Hell no, I just don't want to be the first one to get it. I'm going to let it sizzle. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to put a big toe in the water to make sure it's... Yeah. <laughs> no, you stupid, bro. No, I, I say, yeah, I'm coming outside. You know how you say your people out first, dog? <laughs> Damn, yeah, sacrificial lambs. <laughs> I say, damn, I know it was that hot out there, man. Let me go, uh, <laughs> take this sweater off. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, no, when it's, or when it's too cold, you know what I mean? You send your people out when it's too cold. That's a man. I'm a barbecue, yeah. I'm a barbecue in the backyard and, and keep it, keep it yeah. as that. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. Smoke a whole turkey. Hey, I feel like with it. For like volume five though, I wanna have that in like Atlanta. Oh damn. You yeah. I like that. OTR, I, think, bro. I think I think I think that'd be a good look. Just go on the road with it. Hell yeah, dog. Hey, cause you know, 
uh, like they got the beat battles, they got the uh, rapping over beat battles and stuff. I ain't seen no like real cipher like the way you doing it, bro. You know what I mean? I commend you for that too, cause like it's it's, it's hard to create your own market, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. uh, it's like one of them things where people didn't know they wanted it. You get what I'm saying? Like yeah, until you give it to them, they make them a plate of it. Uh, <laughs> You said what? People don't know they want it until you make them a plate of it. <laughs> oh, most definitely, bro. Most definitely. <laughs> like, dog, uh, it's just, it's, but like you said, man, when you cooking in that kitchen, man, you know, it's just seeing the work, bro. You know? Yeah, and, and it's believing in yourself and putting up your own money. You got to put money up. I used to wait for other people to try to pitch in money, and that'll, that'll make everything stagnant because they, they would drag their feet on the situation or not come through at all. Then you just start depending on yourself, like, man, I'm putting, putting this little money up for it, and I ain't got nobody to blame for this it's not jumping off but me. That's what's up, man. So, like, as a um, black business owner, bro, you know, shout out to you. And um, being a part of black media also, bro. So, like, what would be your advice for people that's, like, looking to start their own or just get get started, bro, with with their dreams or their aspirations, bro. Um, I think believing in yourself that goes a long way because I can't convince you to believe in me if you don't believe if you don't believe in yourself. Believe in yourself and go one hundred and ten percent at it. You can't lose. Simple as that. For sure, bro. So, like, anything you want to um tell the people? You want to tell them where they can reach you at? You know. Yeah, um, tune in to the Top 5 Dead or Alive podcast on YouTube. The cypress that we're talking about, volume 1, 2, 3, is all on there. I think volume 3 is at like 6,000 and some change. My subscribers is at 97, so subscribe and, man, subscribe. That's what's up, man. Well, we're going to have to chop it up another time, bro. You know, uh, it was man, nice. Thank you for having me. Um, oh, big shout sure. out to the Dugard podcast. Oh man, big shout out to Top Five Dead or Alive, man. Hey, you inspired me, bro, for sure, bro. Man, you say, thank you for real, bro. <laughs> but uh, you know, we gonna chop it up, bro. I'm gonna holler at you, Art. All right, bro. Be smooth. All right, smooth. Wait, wait, wait. I do this for the family. It's serious to me. <laughs>